It's 42, 1942. The war's on. Rick Abata, his hobby is sending these Navy operatives into Germany. They've been going all over Germany, and they're staggered at what they found. They found hundreds of different types of advanced weapons being built. These included 60 foot and 250 foot, 500 foot UFOs, round vehicles, okay, UFOs. Um, they built some of these out of chromoly steel that would weigh tons and tons and tons. They had developed, or they had been given, electromagnetic anti-gravitational propulsion. Uh, they have all these UFOs, different types of propulsion that were unbelievable, uh, laser weapon systems, uh, unbelievable stuff. All over the country, Germany and the occupied areas, they had massive underground production facilities that they were using, uh, they had developed for regular uh, arms waste like tanks and places to build uh, Navy ships and all this kind of stuff. Most of it was underground. So they started expanding those facilities and they put 11 of these UFO shaped vehicles in production. So the operatives are trying to explain to us and the Admiral would back off and say, slow down, I don't believe you. And that went on, and then the captains would say the same thing. The operatives were nice guys, and they knew they were going to get the questions when they got back into the admiral's office, and they knew that nobody was going to believe what they said. So fortunately, the admiral had a typist in there, and the admiral's aide was not in there. He wasn't even cleared to be in there, and one or two of the captains, the admiral and myself, and we were the ones, the only people that this information was given to uh, by the operatives. I, I want to step sort of back to my job in the Navy there working for Admiral Ricabata. We talked about uh, my mission. Not my job, my mission. It's documented, okay? It's written by the Secretary of Navy Forrestal, okay, who became the number one guy in the military. Then he, like several other people, including our president at that time, were talking to a lot of other people. And so he was supposed to have had a mental breakdown, so they took him to the hospital there in Washington, at the top floor, and uh, pushed him out the window. And so that's the guy that wrote Admiral Rickabata's mission which then my mission came from his. That was the level of this information uh, in the United States. Now, no other country but Germany knew about the extraterrestrials. Nobody did. Now, as this start to unveil the reality of what Germany was doing, it was like uh, the war is going to be over, period. They're going to take the whole planet, and uh, they could do it in five minutes. They even had trained a group of soldiers, an entire battalion of them, who were cloned. They had cloned a whole battle group of soldiers. They sent them out front, and they were killing the Russians unbelievably. So it's not just the material, but the, uh, and advanced medical systems, longer lives. The size and the magnitude of what was taking place was unbelievable to everybody that got involved in the program. The SS found out that people could live longer. So there was another big massive program given in pieces, brought back by the Navy operatives, plopped it on the table uh, in front of Admiral Ricabata and of course that ended up with about 24 packages because of the different magnitudes of of living longer and I guess if you ask the question for the Nordics their comparable lifespans are 
1,400 to 2,200 years. But they look exactly like us. There is a study that we did later on at TRW uh, on advanced life systems, as extended life. And that program is down now to within less than two years. It's going to be available to some people on this planet. And the way it works, I'm, I'm, I'm very involved with it. Uh, essentially, you take four aspirin over six months, pop them, or you get four shots. You immediately change. Everything is nicer. Everything is nicer, okay? What you do is you revert back to the girl's 21 and the guy's 29. Now, it takes a, a while for you to do this. You then... Uh, stay at that uh, time for essentially a couple of thousand years. Your brain then, which collectively we're only using 2.2% of our brain, I don't care what they're telling us, we're only using 2.2%, uh, you get a minimum of 400% capability over what you normally had. and. Now, what this does is, this allows you to contribute, allows you to contribute. You go to work for the company here, 20 years, they give you the watch, and you got a couple of three years later on, and you're out of, out of the picture, okay? So you didn't, you didn't contribute very long, all right? Now, you're living 2,000 years, and you can contribute, and you also can have fun for 2,000 years. And you don't change age. You stay there. Five of the top medical research groups, just like Scripps right here in San Diego, are involved in this. And there's hundreds of companies involved in this. There's a whole lot out there that is being removed from our part of our life. And that we are in this position where everything that we've been taught, whether it's in the university or in medical or in any technical field, even mathematics, is baloney. Our entire history, all the way back thousands of years, has been being controlled. We now know this. This is not something that we think could happen. We now know this. So if you look at countries, you look at the Roman times and you see, if you, if you take in parallel these events back with that, the Romans were being mind controlled. They had the elite group and then they had all of the army and then they had the, the, the slaves. And that's where we are now. We're just finding out about this and we need to fix it. So we had a young girl, Nordic, just outside of Germany, some people talked to her and they said, uh, you are now involved in a new program and you're going to have great support in this program. She had developed with an, I think she had eight girls. They were continually talked to telepathically to go and design spaceships. The little blonde actually built them and eventually two of those got over here uh, in Area 51. But Germany found out about the blonde, took her over, stopped everything, and then got to this point where there was some sort of pressurized program by the SS to control that original group. Now. Several times they did work together, but Hitler allowed them to operate independently of the whole SS program, the whole development. So we had two developments going on in Germany. The girls didn't want their vehicles to be used for anything else but travel. They were afraid that somebody would get a hold of it and they use it for military. 
which is, of course, what they got. But the girls finally ended up in Antarctica in the large facilities. In fact, uh, the reptilians had three massive caverns. They let Germany use two small ones. But uh, when you're talking about small, <clears throat> it's like as big as California. And so uh, there's cities in both the extraterrestrial caverns and uh, manufacturing uh, everything that you would need on a planet. So then Hitler's group uh, did the same thing. Four years before the war was over, it was decided that the war could possibly be lost, but uh, if we win it, we still need to get out of the area because the Allies are going to bomb us off of the Earth and there won't be anything here left for us. So they decided to move to everything to Antarctica. Admiral Byrd, they're going to go down there and they were going to take out the whole thing in one week. The top people in every area of the Navy, best aircraft, best ships, best weapons, everything. And uh, five weeks later, things didn't look very good. When we got down there, they had decided they were going to have one thrust from the west side of an article and then the opposite side coming into both of them towards the center of the uh, continent. And so before we even got all the guys around, and they, I'm talking about big four-engine flying boats, okay, and ships, uh, battleships and destroyers and submarines and you name it. Uh, before they got there, these fairly large, they were 100 foot diameter saucers, came up out of the ocean and took down everything. Now there's a misnomer on some documentations about the pictures that the pho uh, photographs of uh, uh, some of the German UFOs. Many of the close-ups give you a real clear, clear picture of the cross on them. What was partially incorrect in that, in that information that's been released was that not all of the vehicles came up out from the German side to take out ours, but from the large caverns on the uh, adjacent to them, unmarked UFOs and unmarked cigars came up, which then, it was a joint venture by the extraterrestrials that lived there, operated from there, and built the vehicles that went to uh, the moon and Mars and all these other places. Uh, but we lost that war. We lost that war. Thank you.